Did you notice that in the mission where we are going to get the tennis teacher, that vehicle that Michael is using from the supposed contractor is written MacDill Olsen? This makes you think that it was not a contractor who was at Michael's house, but a spy from the FBI. Because in other FBI missions, we see them wearing the same disguise. In today's video, I will be showing you 30 amazing curiosities about the GTA 5 missions. All these missions have a lot of things to show. I will be showing few missions in this video, but there is a lot of curiosity. So leave the like right at the beginning and let's start. And bro, subscribe if you are not subscribed. I will show the curiosities according to the missions of the game. So the first mission that I will be showing you is the prologue. And it already has several curiosities in itself. Going to the left in the maintenance room, we see that this door would be used in the beta version. Not exactly this door, but this room. And for some very strange reason, Rockstar ended up removing it. But with the help of a mod in the clip, you can enter and see that the scenery is very complete. With cameras and everything else. A very cool curiosity. Let's go to the next one. The second thing is that the robbery happened very likely near Christmas. In addition to seeing a tree and several flashlights, not only here on the bench but in some parts of the city, we also see some cards there written things related to Christmas. The third thing is that the police are not very smart in this game. They are kind of stupid. Their scheme, their functionality is kind of stuck. And the only way they will go after you is if you shoot them. The fourth thing is that there is an alien frozen under the bridge. Just come here and take a quick look. The mission will fail, but no problem. You restart from where you left off. You will see an alien frozen. Brad ends up dying at the beginning of the game, but in fact the shot he takes was for Trevor. When Dave shoots, Brad passes in front of him without knowing and ends up hitting his chest, and not Trevor. Since Michael's initial idea was to kill Trevor, since he is stronger and much more vengeful than Brad, In Franklin and Lamar's mission, when we get to steal those two vehicles at the beginning of the game, if you don't leave at once, you'll see that the owner of the vehicle will appear to fight you for stealing his vehicles. And then you can hit the guy or not, no problem, the mission doesn't fail. Another thing here is that when we go to the movie studio, we can see several humans dressed as aliens, and so far everything is fine. The strange thing is that they are exactly the same as the alien that is under the bridge in the first mission. And how do they know exactly the appearance of aliens? The third thing is that it is almost impossible to win Lamar during this race that happens in the second mission of the game. However, there is a very easy scheme for you to pass Lamar at the end of the race. Just when he's getting in there, after leaving the parking lot, you take the right, Go straight under the FRB and the Union Depot store, and you'll be very fast in front of him. Even if you stay behind him throughout the race, where the game is stealing that Lamar hits 500 per hour. In the mission where we are going to get a motorcycle in the territory of the vagrants, we see an uncle talking about Lord Zalfo. Look at that. Hey, what's up, mom? You alright? No, wait, wait! Away from me! Perfect Zalfo agents! Lord Zalfo would supposedly be a god who helped in the development of human agriculture and some other things. And we can see that Ron, Trevor's friend, is an adept at this because he talks a lot about Lord Zalfo on the game's radios. Another very cool thing is that after you shoot this vehicle and it explodes, just turn right and you'll get the guy riding a motorcycle. That way you don't have to chase him, just turn right and when he's out of the motorcycle you shoot him and he steals the motorcycle. Another very interesting thing is that we can't buy the character's personal vehicle, but in the aggravating mission, we can get a car basically the same as Michael's car, and we don't have the option for the other characters. And why does this happen? Another very interesting thing is that Jimmy is not playing what's going on on TV is just a trailer. If you take your cell phone and search for Richard Slater, you'll see the same trailer that shows what Jimmy is supposedly playing. In addition, if you use a silencer gun and shoot the TV, the TV will stop working. But even so, Jimmy will continue to play normally. Unlike you shooting at other electronics in the house that Jimmy would notice. If you look at Trace's conversation with her friend, you'll see that Jimmy has already been hitting Trace's friends. And she says that by scratching her friend's beak. I still love him though. Sort of. 
Well, the other day, I walked in on him, and he was jerking off over pictures of my friends. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> the hot ones, Lauren and Lisa. No, I didn't mean it like that. You're beautiful and interesting. It's just that, you know, guys don't, they just don't get you. Hello? Hello? Fuck. Whatever. Bitch. <laughs> if instead of taking Michael to another place after you are ambushed by him in the aggravating mission, you take him to another place, there will be a cutscene where Michael will call you a donkey and will give you a headshot. This don't look like the way to no credit alley to me. Shit, man, with traffic and all, this way is fast. Don't move, kid. After you finish the aggravating mission, you can still have a special dialogue with Michael if you meet him on the street. Weird seeing you here. Oh, hey. Ah, uh, look, I'm sorry you got in trouble with your boss. You know, I'm sorry I broke into your house. Yeah, you're sorry you got caught. Nah, actually I ain't. You know, one door closes and that shit. All right, I'll tell you what, let's have a beer sometime. Uh, yeah, for sure, dog. I'll look you up. I... In the couple's therapy mission, we have to go after the tennis teacher with a car that is supposedly from a contractor who is working at Michael's house. The strange thing is this, if you look, you'll see it written Mac Jewel or Sem Construction on the side. And I believe that in fact, instead of being a contractor, this contractor was also an FBI spy. This is because in the 3 is 2 mission, which is that mission where we have to save Mr. K from the IAA building, we see them playing Mr. K inside a van. And this van has the same logo as the car we use in the game. Mac Jewel or Sem. That is, it may be that the guy there is a normal contractor, or it may be that this contractor is also an FBI spy who was watching Michael because of the agreement they had previously. Another thing that is very cool is the following. When we go to that mission where we have to get the Manuji, that he goes out on a motorcycle, we can see that Lamar talks about Franklin's special ability. You got sloppy, homie. Where that laser sight shit at? Give me a... You ain't even concentrating. Do that special driving thing you do. Go back and change Anyway, if you kill her, the mission won't fail. This is used as a speedrun technique by many players. Because it takes a long time to get the chopper out of the chair, you have to go there, and there's still a cutscene, and you can just kill her and continue the mission normally. Another thing is in the father-son mission. If you start throwing Molotovs on this boat while the people are up there, even if you hit Franklin and Jimmy and they end up falling from the yacht, they won't be affected and will be respawned back to their original state. I think this happens because in the mission we have to keep shooting and these shots can end up killing the characters. So Rockstar did something to make them invincible during this mission. Which is pretty cool, right? This avoids us from failing quickly. In this part of the game, it's the only mission where we can put three people in a two-door car. This happens because instead of Jimmy entering through the door, which supposedly wouldn't exist, he falls over, so he stops right in the back seat. Another thing is that if you can't get Franklin after you get Jimmy, there will be a secret cutscene where Michael eats Jimmy's toko. Ah! Dad, don't be all butthurt! At least you got me out of there! You listen to me, you little shit! That kid! Just jumped off the hood of a moving car to save your ass, and now he's gone! And so's my boat! If you get Franklin and somehow use a mod to reach the boat and not let it escape, be it a turbo mod or a no-clip mod like I'm using, you'll see that the truck accelerates a lot. Like it's an absurdly stratospheric thing. And after a while, the truck disappears. The boat keeps moving alone, as if it were a demon dragging it, and after a while it's walking alone on the map of the game. It will always stop in the same place, and if you look to one side and turn the camera back to it, you'll see that it's already gone, and the mission will be completed. In other words, it's impossible for you to get Michael's yacht. At the end of this mission, we need to fix Amanda's car, and if you start tuning Amanda's car, 
you'll see Jimmy saying some really cool phrases about his mother getting a new car or his mother going after Chewbacca, basically. I to borrow this thing. Serious stopping power right there. Did someone say body kit, yo? Put some roids in its bloodstream. Juice it. Power equals pussy. Or maybe like penis, in my mom's case. It'll feel like a different engine. Toy Boy's going to flock to my mama in this ride. My mama's car had almost as much work as my mama. The bike and run the mission. What's cool about this mission is that if you start driving like a madman, Jimmy will start fighting with you. You're driving like a psychopath, Michael! Do you realize that? Or are you so high on your own outmoded sense of masculinity that you think this is normal? Besides, there's an Easter egg that few people notice. And it's the fact that Jimmy is a little bit more of a psycho. If you look at the bicycle rental shop shirt, you'll see that there's a John Marston wallpaper. In other words, it's basically a reference from Rockstar Games to Red Dead 1, because it's exactly the wallpaper that was on the game's cover in some scenes on the internet, etc. Another cool thing is that after we get Tracy, we have to run away from the guys in the Vespucci Beach channels. But this is not mandatory. You can simply stop your jet ski and kill the two characters. Of course Tracy will be pissed off. She will say, wow, you killed him, or wow, the two died. And if you decide not to kill them, you will see that there will be some posts on the Life Invaders talking about it. It's a really cool detail, because normally when we don't follow the mission the way we want, the missions tend to fail. Unlike that, this mission you can do in two different ways and will generate two different reactions at the end. In the Friendship Request mission, we need to buy some clothes to go to the Life Invaders and get the crazy. What many people don't know is that if you enter here and after the mission is over, you will see an extension dialogue about the mission. The woman asks him how the interview was and a dialogue is rolled up. Another thing in this mission is that when you are at the top of the Life Invaders office, you can see Jay Norris. He sits at the end as if he were having a meeting before the announcement of the Life Invaders mobile device. The transmission of Life Invader is pre-recorded, and you can find out if you come to the place where this event is supposed to be happening. When you get here, at the place where the event would be, you will see that there is no one, besides the thing not being decorated. And also, Jay Norris wouldn't get here before me since I came straight from the helicopter, so it's not live, it's something pre-recorded. Another thing is that if you don't call Jay Norris, the mission will fail. But it will fail because Jay Norris was already expecting a call, but obviously he wasn't expecting a call from you but a call from his team. And then if you don't call, he'll release this comment and the mission will fail. At around this point in my presentation, there was meant to be a call from my product team to introduce the device. But we're experiencing some technical difficulties. I hate to keep you waiting any longer, but trust me, it's worth it. And don't worry, I will fire several people for this. Did you like this style of video? Leave a like and a subscription so we know you're really enjoying it. And also watch the next videos that will appear now here on the screen for you. There's only cool stuff. Until the next video then, a hug and bye.